When the doctor finally came in, and I just remember looking at her and saying, what's wrong? And she said, there is a mass on Parker's left kidney. It just didn't make sense. He was running around like a, like a normal kid. And, you know, then they come in and tell us, we suspect that this is uh, neuroblastoma. I remember Dave telling me, like, I just want to take him home and, like, take him hiking or fishing again. Because we didn't know if we would get that chance. The hematologist told us the dreaded news I had cancer. It was multiple myeloma. I had never heard of it. So I went home and prepared to die. We found a large mass at the level of the left kidney. It was uh, an adenocarcinoma of pancreatic origin. I knew it was a very aggressive kind of cancer. I went into cancer research because I was personally touched by cancer. Um, I lost both of my parents to cancer when I was young. We've made significant progress, although we still have a lot more work ahead of us. Basic research is pivotal to the advances that we have made in the clinic. There's a lot of really specific challenges as a young adult diagnosed with cancer, specifically metastatic breast cancer. While I was watching my friends advance in their careers and go into committed relationships and have kids, I was spending a lot of time just navigating my diagnosis. I think it was really, really difficult to have this really sudden flip on my life. When the doctor reviewed the MRI with us right then and there on that day, he immediately gave us a, you know, information on who to see to get this brain tumor removed. When they first gave me the MRI and I had to send it to CHOP, I had to go to FedEx. And the lady at FedEx says, what is the value of this document? And I just started crying because it was priceless. Back then, the first line is chemotherapy, so the side effects are pretty rough. And then Michael's tumor started to grow again, so he was put on a Avastin. Unfortunately, his kidneys shut down. Finally, the MEK inhibitor medications came to CHOP, and we were on trametinib, and unfortunately, it wasn't working either. And then finally, the day 101, or tovorabzinib, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, has been working. First MRI on it showed shrinkage, so we're beyond thankful for it. I started with Uravoy. That didn't work. Then I went on Optivo, and Optivo gave me the combination of the two. I had so many side effects. Fortunately, Dr. Kluger found this clinical trial. Lifalisil is a first-in-class therapy um, that was recently approved by the FDA. Jennifer he hasn't been treated since 2017. She can outlive me. Thank God it worked. I was sent for an ultrasound, an MRI, and it turned out that there was a seven centimeter tumor in my breast. After that, they sent me for more tests. I had cancer in my bones. So I was diagnosed with de novo, which is right off the bat metastatic lobular breast cancer. I think clinical trial research is incredibly important because that's how they find drugs to work. Unfortunately, there are practically no clinical trials for lobular breast cancer specifically, and that's something that I am very adamant about advocating for. Patient advocates more and more are going to be crucial to the success of clinical cancer research. The reason is, is because our trials have become really, really complex. The patient advocates need to be involved early on as we're designing these trials so that we can expedite the trials and get to the end point faster. We learned that my condition had advanced. There were some clinical trials available for patients like me. The first infusion, it was very hard for me to walk. It was very hard for me to stay uh, seated during the treatment. I was so weak and so 
uh, fatigue. But two days after the infusion, I was already walking a lot better and I started eating. I was in remission by April 2024. Cancer and any illnesses, they don't have boundaries, whether it's your religion, your political views, it's your orientation, it doesn't make a difference. It affects everyone. If we can find a better way, if we can find medications that aren't as toxic to the kids that have these benefits, you can't put a price tag on that. We need the research so that we can find cures for it. We can't do that unless Congress helps fund it. The continued and hopefully increased funding by the federal government and cancer research is pivotal to the development of treatment strategies that can increase the longevity of patients, increase the cure rate of patients with cancer. I am so lucky that progress in cancer research has been faster than the progression of my disease. We've got the momentum. We can't let that stop.